excited to have all of you with us as we give you tips and tricks for cutting. Welcome everybody, I'm Heidi Kaisen and this is Jamie Willett and we are from Hen and Chick Studio in Conrad, Iowa and we're so glad you are joining us for our cutting tips and tricks class. It's there's gonna be exciting, Heidi. Oh, there's I so mean, much to know. As exciting as uh, cutting tips can be, we are excited about sharing and helping people to learn and to understand how just this simple basic thing that maybe sometimes people, eh, no, 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 no. Cutting is a, is a very critical step in the process. Right. You know, every step in the process of quilt making can be fun and exciting, and there's lots of different, you know, uh, ways to approach things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and somebody else could teach this class, and they would have a whole nother set of tips and oh, tricks. Yeah, absolutely. We're just sharing our experiences. But when you make sure that you cut your fabric correctly, you are really on the way to having a better finished product. And that's what we all want. That's exactly right. We want those quilts so that we can give them away and you know wrap up in them when it's cold, all those kinds of things. So, so I think mm -hmm. we might be ready to give some tips, tips and tricks. Absolutely. Well, where we're gonna start is at the beginning. We're not gonna skip any part of this. And we're gonna talk first about the tools. Because they're, again, as you can even probably see right here, uh, I feel like the table is cluttered a bit um, with everything just for us to start to explain um, what you need. Mm -hmm. So let's first start with the rotary cutters. Start at the very basic beginning. At the very basic beginning. There are three sizes of blades that are available. 60 millimeter, which this is, that's the largest. 45 which is the medium size. Uh, I think that's a 60. There you go. This one's 45. There you go. There's a 45. And that one's a 45. And we don't happen to have the 28 millimeter, but if you can imagine, it's real small. And, and it certainly has, um, has reasons for being used and stuff as well. Again, a potential another whole class. Yes. Um, but then, once you talk about the sizes of the blades, mm -hmm. then you talk about the handles. And boy, over the years, we have seen a variety of handles. They're becoming more ergonomically correct so that we don't hurt any of our right. arm muscles and shoulder muscles and all those kinds of things. But it really comes down to personal preference. It does. And, and we know that, of course, we don't have every style or every option here, but it is a personal preference. I like, happen to like a different one than you, I think. That's right. You, yeah. I believe, like, I like this, this one. This one. Um, it is locked at the moment. It has a lock. If I unlock it, then if I squeeze in um, the handle, then the blade comes out and you can lock it in place either way. Or just don't lock it so it, the blade always comes back in and then lock it. That's correct. So that, that it won't accidentally yeah, come out. They can see. So yes. it's held like this. Yes. And, yeah. and um, that one is very easily move from right hand to left hand. Yes, it is. Because we have lefties in the store. Oh, we do. So every once in yeah. a while I come up and I find that the blade is on the other side. And I'm like, what? That's not right. And I'm like, oh yeah, easily. Mm -hmm. Okay, versus this one, it's this button, if you want some lever, whatever you want to call this, and I pull it toward me mm -hmm. and that makes the blade come out. I push it away from me and the blade goes in. Right. And again, there's a variety of different ways that those um, that happens on all of them. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you can get different colors of handles, um, different, you know, besides just the different mm -hmm. shape. Now, Jamie, right away, I think they're probably wondering, well, why is it important that the rotary blade retract in and out? Well, around here, you have to pay a quarter if you leave it out. That's so, exactly right. Be because that's Goldie's rule. That's right, because these blades are so sharp it can cut your fingers off. Oh, yes. It literally can cut your fingers yes. off, and many of you have experienced that. <laughs> we do not want any injuries. Right. So a habit to get into something, you know, a habit to right. get into, habit, a habit to get into, um, we should always retract that blade so that it's, it, when it's you lay closed. it down, yeah, so it's close. When you lay it down here, that you're not 
um, having that out because what if I set it down, leave it out, turn around, turn back, and I accidentally wipe my it hand? Cut your hand. Uh, it'll cut my it hand. Mm -hmm. In when there's a retreat or there's multiple people in a room, if if I don't know that you left the blade out and I walk up to it, I may assume it's out or in and grab it yeah, and, and cut not myself. Even, or not even know, and it's just a safety thing. It is definitely a safety issue. Those blades are very sharp. And, and speaking of the blades, this is an investment to buy this tool, but a, an investment that is well worth it. Yes. And and when we talk about these tools, of course there's an investment to it, but the op you would be able to use them over and over and over again. And so when we do talk about how sharp the blade is. Mm -hmm. um, they can get dull. They can get dull. Nicked. And they absolutely get nicked. Um, and it does make a difference, you can tell. When you mm -hmm. cut, you'll just be able to tell when it gets dull. So then once you've made that initial investment, then you can just go back and purchase your refill blades. Absolutely, and we sell them in packages of one, two, five, yep. uh, kind of thing, depending on how you want to have them on hand in your sewing room, <laughs> because it never fails <laughs> that it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm trying to get that quilt cut out that needs to be cut out, yeah. and that's when I end up with a nick in the blade and yeah. wish I had an extra yeah. blade. Yep. So they don't go bad. Um, they, they can react to humidity, so do keeping them in a, you know, keeping them in a cool, dry spot is always good. Yes, very good. And we want people to know some of those little yes. tricks too. Okay, so uh, that's those are the rotary Number cutters. One is something to cut. With. Yes. Okay, you cannot use these on a regular table. No. Because if you put them on a regular table, you're going to have cutting lines on your table. So you need. Or it will cut your wood if you're that's cutting right. on a kitchen table. That's right. And how about if I move this yep. this way? You need a mat. And just as the rotary cutters come in a variety of sizes, so do the mats. You bet. Mm -hmm. And so there are, you know, it really depends on what size do you have space for or what is the need. If or I'm what are you cutting? Correct. If because, I'm traveling. And I just am cutting little squares, squaring up little pieces, a size like this is perfect. Correct. But, or if I'm traveling I like and, and I want a little bigger mat, this one actually, I'll just take it out yeah, so you can see what it does. And it, there we go, and it opens up and then makes a slightly bigger mat. So now I'm traveling, it doesn't take up so much space, right. but boy, I've got something I can do a little bit more with, mm -hmm. okay? And Heidi, why, what is the nice thing about these cutting mats? Like why um, would somebody want a cutting mat not just want to throw down some protective covering on top of their table? Because first of all, it's referred to as self-healing, so it's going to last longer. It's made for sharp blades that are in the rotary cutters, and so in some ways it's protecting your blade right. as much as it's protecting your surface. Very good. Okay. Um, then there are mats that are like rotating. This one has a little device, if you want to say, built into yeah. it. So I literally could rotate that mat. Um, again, if I'm trying to trim something mm -hmm. uh, and don't want to, you know, the less you move your fabric, the more accurate yep. you are. Yep. We're going to say that lots. The less you move your fabric, the more accurate you are. So being able to have a rotating mat, and these come in two sizes right. as well. And I, I would say this is a pretty common size, and of course we're just showing a couple different ones that we have available. Yep. I'd say this is a pretty common size for a beginning uh, or if apartment or, or college student that you, you can you can accomplish pretty much all you want on a, a correct mat this size. Correct. And even here in the store, we have the largest mat. Um, it is great for having it on large services, but there are certainly advantages to having smaller mats. Yep. Again, I can rotate the mat yep. mm -hmm. um, if, I, if I need to. Mm -hmm. So we've got all of the mats that are available. Yep. Then we have, we need a ruler, right? Because you've got your, your rotary cutter yep. has to be up against something. And um, so I grabbed just, again, just a couple to show you the variety. Uh, we carry, if you want to, um, actually, let's do this one. Uh, Quilter Select is a particular brand that, it, if you might say it looks a little frosted, it's got a coating on the back, and it's it definitely, if we could make the screen so that you could I touch. Can show it a little bit um, here. <laughs> it definitely uh, is d uh, a different texture, but it's not sticky. Right. That's the it's weird thing. It's kind of thing. an anti-slip. 
anti-slip, but when you put it on fabric, it does not move. No. It's the weirdest thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you just know that it's like, yeah, magic, that it works. <laughs> but that's Quilter Select. And Quilter Select is what I would call a traditional ruler. And I love the eight and a half inch wide because how many times does the pattern call for a six and a half inch wide border? Mm -hmm. And if you have a six inch ruler, then you yeah, gotta figure sure. out, yeah. <laughs> you gotta figure out how to do that extra half inch. Yeah. And so sometimes <coughs> on these, um, you will see that they come in different widths. There's, Heidi was saying this one's eight and a half. Um, I think there, there are six inch, I think we might have a six inch one in a different brand of ruler. But when you're looking at your rulers, we want you to, again, invest if you haven't invested in something that will make you successful and be have multiple uses and functions to it. We've said it before, you say it all the time. If you're gonna spend the money on a good product, let's make sure that it has more than one use. Right. So, <coughs> excuse me. And so, of course, that those are all those Quilter Select products. Again, a variety of square sizes, that kind of thing. Then we have our Stripology rulers. Uh, and here I have the mini and the XL. There is also a third one called the squared. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a, a whole system. That's a good way to describe it. It, it doesn't take away having a, a straight, edge. straight edge ruler. Although I will say I, I use my Stravology more than I use this one because I use a straight edge on the side of the ruler. But this one is designed for a little bit um, like a system, you're right. Yeah. Like her patterns, are specific for her patterns, but you can apply them across the board to any pattern and gives you opportunities um, for less movage. Mm -hmm. Is that a word? Movage? Yes. Less, yes. Less movage. We're going to make it up. We'll it's, make it yes. up if it's not. It's our of own. your fabric. Because, and we'll show that to you. So stay tuned. We'll show that to you of why this is a particular uh, product that I think is what super well worth and, it. And just for the sheer size to understand, yeah. like there are things that this 24 inch ruler can do that With the stripology can't yeah. do. Yep. It, but again, working together, they can be Absolutely. great tools. So we're gonna be talking more about that ruler. Then there are all sorts of specialty right. rulers. I grabbed one of my favorites, the Hex and More. I've used this on several products, projects, excuse mm -hmm. me, where you can actually count, uh, cut hexagons and um, 60 degree angles. Right, and uh, several patterns have that 60 degree triangle, and that's in there it's, as well. There's 60 degree triangle. There's all yep. sorts of other tools of rulers and specialty rulers and things that you can use depending on the project or project that you're yep. working on. But this class is to kind of just give you the overview of very basic. So we're not going to get into how to how to use this particular stuff. ruler. No, but um, certainly it just is good to show you that there are lots of different and rulers out there. there's plenty of options out That's there. That's right. Okay, now we've talked about what we would call the three main ingredients right, here. Right. But there are some extra ingredients <laughs> to the cutting spice process. It up a bit. Yeah, spice it up. We need a little spice around here. Okay, first of all, want to talk about scissors. Um, you do need a good pair of fabric scissors. Those are different than craft scissors that you might be using on your paper. And then your family steals them because they're so sharp and you go and try to find them and now they're no longer fabric scissors because they've That's cut right. something else with them. So in the store, uh, we sell these purple sparkly scissors. Those are fabric like scissors. So, Every girl so fabric, some sparkle in there. That life. was our way to tell uh, our fabric scissors from our paper scissors. Yeah. So if they're purple and sparkly, we don't use them on paper, okay? <laughs> And uh, again, lots of different kinds yeah. of scissors. So we've got that. Uh, we love our Wonder Clips. Mm -hmm. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, why are we gonna use Wonder Clips? Well, there's some organization that has to occur as you're cutting to keep pieces together. And Wonder Clips do a great job in helping um, keep those pieces together. Yeah. And so we'll show more yeah, of we'll that, show that as we go. And then there are tools like stickers. Um, and it's a little hard to just look like a purple piece here, but there are actually cutout stickers of yeah. arrows that use we can use on the stripology to rulers. help remind you where you're cutting. Okay, that's Make right. More successful. That's right. And then of course there is uh, again other tools like uh, these little point trimmers uh, to help you 
uh, if you're depending on your yep. cutty. Yep. So and there's other ones of those too. These are just one, a few that we've shown here. Yep. And another tool that we're going to talk about yeah, is, right. uh, is our best press mm -hmm. and, uh, whether, uh, again, whether you need to use it or not, uh, that will be coming up as well. Yeah. But have we covered all of our tools? I think we have. I think it's a good idea. A again, we know we're giving the introduction of what you need. So let's review. A, so a good, road, a good, good rotary cutter of your yep, choice. With There's a sharp blade. Sharp blade out there that you are using on fabric. That's right. Okay. A cutting surface. Yep, some kind of a mat. That's protected. Yes. And then what our third thing was? Some kind of a ruler. Some kind of a ruler. And the thing is, a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about, certainly, well, and a couple times we'll show you both using the, like a straight traditional ruler versus a stripology. Mm -hmm. um, but you can do lots of things with all of the rulers sometimes it's just understanding what it is that you exactly. need to do yep so that wraps up our tools section and we'll uh, be back with more information <laughs>everybody we are ready to to do some cutting aren't we Jamie yes and to give some tips and tricks and hopefully inspire you with um, some reminders refreshers and how you can become more successful in your cutting and therefore in the quilts that you produce absolutely now one of the things you know we talked a lot about the tools but we did not talk about the table height true because that does make a difference it does and if we're sitting at a table that we would eat at it is lower. So a tall person like me <laughs> would be hunched over if my cutting mat was on that. This happens to be a 36 inch height counter that we're working on right now. And that makes a big difference in how, do, how do you, you approach feel, cutting. I mean, do you feel like this is a comfortable height? For Very you? comfortable yeah. height for me. And so I think what we're talking about with that is um, if you're hunched over, Obviously, you're going to put more strain on your body and stuff like that, but also it can affect your actual motion. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and definitely just be aware that the height of your table could make a difference. Mm -hmm. So if you've been having trouble cutting and are thinking, what could I do differently? Look at that. It mm -hmm. may not be the same table that you sit at. It may need to be a different table. One quick way um, to raise a table up, we do this in the retreat center. Yep. We have bed risers. Um, mm -hmm. that, Stick like, them under the corners on you. And it, that's they're, right. They're a uh, folding table and yep, we just it up. And yep, so it's just still a regular table, um, but that helps bring the table up. The height up. Uh, the height mm -hmm. up. And so there's different, definitely different ways that you could do that with a very little expense. It's, exactly. It's not like you have to have a special table. Right. And so that is. If they want an excuse for one, they can. Well, have. yes, because yeah. then we could then get fun storage underneath yeah, and all no, that kind right. of stuff too. Okay, uh, now the next thing is, um, well, we've got our fabric, right? And uh, we, you just yeah, grab some, some stuff out of the have. scraps, and so we've got a little bit of fabric. Do you press your fabric before you cut? You know, Heidi, I think this is a debate. A debate some people have: Do I wash it first? Not personally, I do not wash. And I do not press unless, and I don't have a good example, but you know, if, if the crease was if so it's bad, crinkly, and there's not, yes. then of course, if I can't get it to lay smoothly on my surface for cutting, then I will press it. Take my and a nice little handy thing on the side if you have a little piece, press it real quick, get it all smooth right. out. Have your iron nearby. Uh, wool pressing mat always is good too. Just always remember too that your wool pressing mat needs to be on a surface that is. Um, not the, the steam is going to go through the mat. So through the mat, yep. so you got to always yep. worry about that too. So, do you are are you about the same? I'm I'm the same with you. It's like to me, the less prep I have to do, the better, the faster I can get to <laughs> the cutting. Sooner you get to sew yeah, that way. Absolutely. Yeah. But there are definitely reasons and, and times when again that crease is so bad. Maybe it was like an end of bolt piece, oh, yeah. or it's been you know, yeah or stuck you've had someplace. Yeah. Or something like that. But now, if I needed to press. Then the next question sort of is, is do you use best press? Right. And again, to- So how do we use, explain what best press actually is though? Yep. For some people that may not so, know. So best press is a starch. And basically, you know, think of how we iron men's shirts that if you use a starch, you're gonna make them stiff. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I always think that there is a certain stiffness that comes with fabric when you buy it. 
Some people refer to that as sizing. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and if you wash your fabric, your then hair. that sizing is gone. Right. So then putting a little bit of starch on it can be helpful to um, to you know be able to get a little a little firmer to go through the sewing machine. Batik is a great example of it comes. Oh, very, with, yeah, I would with, not do anything. Like because that. it's stiff enough, you know, kind of thing that like it's gonna be a good. But if you do wash batiks, that definitely softens, yep. and now all of a sudden it can be harder to put through a sewing machine right. because it's it's just softer and moves a little bit more. Yeah. So. so starching, best press, other things like that. Again, it comes down to kind of a personal preference. Yes. There's not a right or wrong answer if you're wondering. Nope. And uh, again, every project. Uh, might have a different opportunity yep. to do yep. something and that's that's what is there's there's so many ways to slice and dice this no yep. pun intended um, <laughs> but there really are uh, there's there there's are some, no right and yeah. wrong and again it's a preference but if we can help you by saying something that is something maybe you haven't heard recently then then that's what we're here to yep. do exactly yep all right so then we're ready for, with our fabric correct? yes yep. yes so let's, how about if I start, you start, and I will just talk, uh, I'm going to use my favorite uh, let, 60 hey, degree. Let's talk about oh. the, the rule, the um, lines on the mat. Yes. Now, uh, the lines on the mat can be very helpful and can be used, um, I say more like when I'm using, trying to cut large pieces of fabric and I need like, we're talking. like 16 yeah. inches, 20 inches, and I my ruler isn't big enough. But in general... I don't use the lines on the mat ever. You go outside the lines. I go outside the lines. Heck, I just turn the mat over <laughs> and use the back side of the mat um, so that it's nice and clear um, for me. I use the fabric as and the ruler as my guide and not the mat. Mm -hmm. Now, one other thing that is really important when you're cutting is that use the same ruler yes. throughout your entire project. Right. That's a good one. That's a good tip. Not all rulers are created equal, and if you start going from one ruler to another, you definitely could see some differences in, in what you're cutting. So And, and also, how do you, in, in time, rulers can break down. I guess. Oh, my gosh. You're, because you're we, always putting a sharp blade next to it. And so, we, as in say, sometimes if we miss that, we can we can get a little it, nick. Yeah. You bet. And so there are, def or if I drop it, the corner goes, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, tape, yeah, we've done that. Yeah. Experience, and so uh, then the next thing is that we have to prepare our fabric for cutting. And this piece, like we said, is a leftover, so I'm kind of assessing it here. I have one salvage edge here, um, and I do not have the other salvage edge on the other side because it's obviously been cut off. So if I were um, laying this down, I would have um, put the two salvage ed edges together, and if I needed to um, fold it over, and do a uh, four layers and have, I would bring that fold up. But since this is a smaller piece, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it as two and layers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tilt the camera in just a little bit so they can see a you little bet. bit better. There you go. You bet. And so like I said, this is my salvage edge and this is my fold. I like to make the assumption that on this fold is my straight, is my straight edge at the moment. I always need to have a straight edge on the side as well. So, I've already lost my rotary cutter. See, this is why it's always important to put the blades <laughs> also in, is that sometimes it gets stuck under something and if I have to grab it. So when I'm straightening my fabric, um, I will put um, a straight line on the ruler. So I just have randomly picked a straight line. I'm lining it up with a fold. And Heidi, I'm gonna switch you around here so that they can see this back side. All so right. Here's if that's okay. You bet. I'm stepping I'll, in. That's fine. You tell. You just tell me where to go. So one thing here, and Elizabeth, the, Elizabeth's helping here with. Can you see us? If we go up this way just a little bit. So if you notice here, there's her fold, mm -hmm. right? And some people are like, "Oh, there's a little. It's not perfect right there." That's what we're talking about. Right. That you didn't have to have it perfect because then when you put your correct, and I'm going to put my. So again, I'm just picking a random line and I'm lining it up. All the way across on the fabric. Can you see that, Elizabeth? The okay. fold is on the fabric. So again, ideally, I'd be standing right here. And we can shift it now. Well, it's all right, but let me just cut. Okay. Now, I also want to note that I am using the Gypsy Gripper because I like, on a big ruler, how I can have more pressure. You can't see my hand, but as I put more pressure on my hand, 
it puts more pressure going out on the ruler and I'm less likely to slip. And I'm also, if you want to say my hand is up and protected, right. I, my thumb isn't next to the, <laughs> yeah. to the you know, ruler, yeah. that, those kinds of things. So there's a lot of reasons why I like that um, ruler um, or the gypsy gripper on my ruler. But then, and maybe I will have to change it just a little bit here. You see, see if we go that way. All right, so turn my hand around. Okay, my line is lined up. I am going to put my uh, rotary cutter at a roughly a 45 degree angle from the mat. So, and then I have my finger up on top, I'm off the fabric, and as I go um, forward, I always like to say it, it's a balance of pushing forward and down. And then retracting the blade, pulling up my strip. I'm gonna do that again, just so you understand. And, and, and Elizabeth, you tell yeah, us if you can can't can see us. Scooch it up just a little. That way? Okay, so again, that way, that's better. I have, I'm, this is all I'm doing is straightening my edge. So I'm using the fold as. And Heidi, why should they straighten their edge? Because when we turn it around and start cutting um, our strips, then we want to know that we have two straight edges, and we're then cutting a third straight edge. Mm -hmm. So we just—it's all about keeping everything straight. So pressure on the ruler, the rotary cutter is off, the the um, fabric right on the mat. Again, pressing down and away and as you're doing that Heidi one thing that made me think of because we've had to do it here when we're helping some people learn how to cut is you shouldn't be up on your tippy toes nope. like this like you're no you don't you want should, you're you know, not up here it's you're, just a natural it, yep you're not down here it's a it's it's all isn't it was that geometry or physics what are we doing here? I don't know some kind of you know it's it's that I'm gonna do it one more time and okay, then I'm gonna shoot it, it up just a little bit because you can't see the blade yet on the this way can't see how your hand is very well it's going to feel closer to Jamie okay so the whole thing there there, there now go. we can see the shape of your hand and yeah how you're holding it really well okay thank you so let's let's review this so to straighten the edge um, I am going to have my salvages my fold I'm going to line up my ruler with the fold put pressure on the ruler start off of the um, fabric on the mat pressing down and forward. Okay, so Jamie, I'm gonna, right here, I'm gonna say, so should I ever come at me? Should I ever cut like this? No, because I mean, that's like rule number one. That we can switch it around now. So yeah. Because there's a couple things I think that you can address with that. Yes, so too. you don't switch wanna yourself. come towards you. Lots of reasons why. So I'm coming forward with uh, pressure and, and I come at me and the blade slips uh, I could cut my thigh right and the other thing is did you notice how I did it all in one oh, movement mm -hmm. is there ever a reason to saw your fabric no because when you saw which you're meaning uh, going back like this yes um, you actually are kind of breaking down that fibers in oh. the fabric and it ends up kind of pulling it apart so you always want one one fell swoop at it, right? That's right, because if I'm and if I'm doing, um, I, I turned it too far. Sorry. If I if I'm going back and forth, I, I'm literally shredding the edge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm making it not straight and it's even. All, yeah. There's Just, all sorts of reasons. So if you ever, you know, I'm gonna. This is a two and a half inch strip. So two and a half inch strip, and I'm done. I just slightly move that fabric away. If for some reason something's not, I don't do this. I grab my scissors and just snip that quick thread. Um, but right. that's And that's another tip that we, if, if there is a thread, do you want to pull it? No, because you'll pull the thread and you'll end up with a funny little line in your yeah. fabric. Yeah. So that's why you wanna leave it. And certainly, you, could I come back and just touch, touch it with it my blade? Absolutely. You bet. Okay, so I'm gonna, as I turn it around, we're gonna be talking a lot today about two and a half inch wide strips. Right. So that's the measurement I'm gonna use okay. at the moment. So I've straightened my edge on the right. When I'm using a traditional ruler, mm -hmm. I actually am gonna cut from the left. So I have to rotate my fabric and I have to cut from left to right. Lots of things. The less you move your fabric, the more accurate you are. Yes. I did rotate it myself. I would have either moved around the table right. or rotated so my mat. When we're doing some of this, it's for the video to help you see better what we're doing. That's correct. Mm -hmm. But the less you move your fabric, the more accurate you are. But I trim it, straighten it on the right, but I'm gonna cut from the left. 
Why? Okay, so now I'm gonna cut a two and a half inch strip. So Elizabeth, can you tip forward just a little bit? So what she's if, doing on this ruler here. So again, I have a line, the dash line is on this particular um, fold because I know that's straight. I've lined this line up, which is my two and a half inch mark with the edge of the fabric, which I've also straightened out. And I know that is straight. So now I have one, two and a half inches, mm -hmm. right? Love it when a ruler has a half inch yeah. so I don't have to think about where I am in the middle. I always want my ruler over the fabric that I'm cutting. Mm -hmm. I'm protecting this two and a half inch strip. So if I'm down to the last wire of a piece of fabric and I accidentally do, I'm gonna exaggerate, this <laughs> and, and do a goofy cut, I still have my two and a half inch strip. You're still safe. I'm still safe. I've protected that. So let me straighten that out, okay? So I now have a two and a half inch strip. Now, um, you see how that's gonna work. Okay, so. but now this leads me to another point, and maybe I'm interrupting you, that's but right. that's okay, that's what we do around here. So we have, we made that mistake, right? It right. happens, we slip, we did something wrong. Yeah. Now we got this. Heidi, can I do, would you recommend, if I wanna straighten this out, would you come back like this? Can I borrow your thing? Yes. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, and I'm gonna say, you do it. No, no, <laughs> no, Jamie, don't do it. I've but, lined it up, Heidi. I've done all my lining up, but... But you're at an angle, so now you're adding to the... You're not getting that blade next to the ruler like it should, so you're... And on the cutting device itself, the blade there, is on the opposite side. You want the that, blade hitting that's the correct. edge of the So blade. it's as simple as run around the table, go over here. Yes, it's all lined up, straighten it out, and I'm ready to go again. she's running back around the table. And I'm running back. This is how I get my exercise. It's, it's my exercise day. program, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, a good, I mean, yes, you, you do not want to be reaching and doing funny. If you're having to do some goofy angle, it's not even about, if you want to say we could talk about it being about the safety. Right. But it's more than that. It's about oh, the yes, accuracy. Yeah. It's yeah. about the, ac you, you know, cannot be as Patty, accurate. One time I did it on a video, a live that we were doing a different time. And I did reach over because I was trying to show the camera and somebody actually called it or corrected us on it. And they are right. I didn't do it right. We saw, sometimes we all kind of break the rule. That's right. Way, but we're giving you the best case our scenario. Goal, our goal <laughs> is, to, is to do it correctly yeah. the majority of the time yeah. so that we have that yeah. accurate, um, that accurate um, pieces. Right. Okay. So in general, I have just shown you how I would cut a two and a half inch wide strip yep. with a straight or traditional ruler, mm -hmm. okay? I would like you to now we'll tell us how I would cut a cut, two and a half inch Yes, strip. and I'm gonna switch places okay, with so you. Okay, so we're gonna switch out here. Would you, you want, grab me a different piece of fabric there? You, got, you want that, oh, uh, that one's here, Sorry, no. no. I should have Maybe you got that one. There okay, so on this, the same thing with Heidi, when we were talking, this one actually has two salvage edges. So. Um, present because it is and uh, this is not a piece I would iron I would leave it as is I'm gonna take this fold on the top I'll, I'll go on this side switch me yep. okay okay you can take your thing yep um, I'm taking this top fold and I'm bringing it down to the salvage okay I'm not super concerned about how oh my gosh is my salvage edges straight or anything like that because I'm going to end up straightening everything and zeroing everything out, okay? So, I've taken that. I'm going to come up and give you a little closer. There's that fold. See the salva the fold and the salvage edge? And I've just aligned them somehow, okay? All right, so then I'm going to lay them down. And now I prefer to use the stripology ruler that Heidi has in her hand. And I'm going to use a different... Okay, so this is the stripology XL. Dive it upside down. Oh, very good. And uh, it has, just to make sure you understand what it is, it has slots and then there are, are there's a space for your blade in between all yeah, of the slots. Right here. So you see your blade goes down in these slots and you're going to note on the bottom here that it has measurements, six, seven, eight, nine. And then from there, you're going to see there's stars and squares. And I hope you can pick that up on there because I can't really see it if you can or not. Um, those stars and squares mark if they're one and a half inch cuts or two and a half inch cuts. So it's a cheat sheet kind of that you don't have to be adding the whole time. 
So when I want to do a two and a half inch square or strip, I'm doing basically the same thing that Heidi just did with a traditional ruler, except I can cut more strips without moving the tool. Right, and doing, so now let's just for the, this is roughly a half yard cut. Yeah. So if you're thinking, um, you know, what fits underneath, uh, uh, a half yard cut, I mean, basically fits underneath, yeah. So um, but any fabric 20, that is folded over yeah. um, twice will. Yeah, any fabric. And if you, and you know, like some of, we know at some patterns you have like three and a half yards. You can unroll and fold yeah. your piece, yeah. and you don't even have to do it the whole way at one time. You can, you know, just do it in a sure section. You do that section at a time. Yes. So the same thing here. Now I've taken it and I've aligned that. And, and Elizabeth, you gotta tell us if you can see this. I've aligned that fold with it it doesn't matter which one on the ruler i've just nope. aligned it with a straight line i've also paid attention over here on this part to make sure that on my zero line that i catch every yes piece or so make, layer of the fabric yep. because this is going to become my what you did to square yours with the traditional this is going to become my zero Yes. And that way. So that means then I'm going to come in here. And Elizabeth, I think you can stay in. Okay. I have my uh, ruler or my, what is this called? Rotary, Rotary cutter. cutter. Okay. This is the one I like. When you start on the mat, and some of this will be a little exaggerated so you can see it when you're using this. It does it have a benefit if you kind of start at an angle. And I'm going to slide over a little bit so you, you can see. Can you see the where I'm at? Um, yeah. You kind of start at an angle and then put it in the slot. If I try to put it straight down in the slot, sometimes I can end up creating a nick or something in that, okay? All right, so now that I moved it, I'm gonna redo the same thing. So I'm picking a line, putting my fold at the top with the line, checking to make sure I have all, however many layers I have, I happen to have four right now, underneath the zero, okay? Making sense so far? Yes. I'm going to take my rotary cutter at a slight angle and put it in my zero, and now I'm going to go up. Now, one one of the things, and you, of course, our table, you it would be, be better here. if you were yeah. just a little bit more that way. Yeah. Now, uh, her ruler is not going to slip either because the stripology ruler does have uh, little grids. Don't pick it up at this point, but it, if I had, it does have the little non-stick. Mm -hmm. um, pieces on the back. And I'm going to move this down so that I can okay. stand on this side. So I'm standing, if they can tell mm -hmm. where I'm standing, yep. in front of my fabric, on the side of my fabric. And I'm going to reshift everything here, make sure you're understanding. I know it's, I'm repeating it several times, but we get a lot of questions on how to do this. Okay, so I got my fabric my fold, I'm not ironing it, it's as it came off the bolt. I'm bringing that fold down to the salvage edges, making sure I get all the layers. I'm gonna just ask, you're not, you're not covering up your salvages, that is for no particular reason other than- I just, just like to see where You just at. like to see the salvage. Yeah. Yeah, so yep. just to make sure yep. people understand yep. that. And I, and I did not press this, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take a line on the ruler, put it with my fold, same thing Heidi did with the traditional, but here's the cool thing. I'm at the zero, because I've zeroed it out. Let's put my blade at a slight angle into the, up I go. Now I'm not moving, I'm not picking up, I'm not moving it. I'm, I'm going to go, because we said two and a half, right? Mm -hmm. So from here, I'm just gonna go over to my two and a half or my square. So I can go two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, without even having to add in my head, which is beautiful, because some days some the adding doesn't happen very well, right? That's I just right. know I'm gonna go square to but square, the less to, we square have to, think, the better. to square. So haven't picked up my fabric, haven't moved anything. I'm gonna go two and a half, two and a half, uh, two and a half. I'm going to my squares each time, right? Anyway, so I can keep going. Quick, you just have cut those four done. strips. Just that quick. Yep. Okay. And I pause, probably would be faster. Now, if I, when I come back in, now I have these nice, I'm going to tear this one off. So there's my two and a half inch strips. And pull them up just a little bit so they can see that, um, that they really are cut apart. They really are cut apart. Yep. 
okay? So then you can straighten them out from here. Now I do want to show, can I go one step further with these you bet. strips? Because a lot of the patterns, and Heidi, we talked about this too, a lot of the patterns call, say, uh, GE Designs, call specifically for your stripology ruler. We are doing very basic straight, but we know once we have these two and a half inch strips or three and a half inch strips or whatever size strips you are, more than likely you're going to be cutting them, sub cutting them down into some other sort of size. So two and a half inch squares, two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. So if I know I'm going to do that, I'm still not gonna pick up my fabric. That's why I don't wanna pick them all up. I wanna show you that I can mm -hmm. take these, leave them here, um, if it's a 10 and a half inch, of course I would open them up. I can do the same thing and just go to the 10 and a half inch. But common two and a half inch by two and a half inch square, right? That you're gonna do. So I can leave that folded over here. Okay, so I hypothetically haven't moved it. I'm gonna switch around this way. So Heidi, I still have my strips. I've done my two and a half inch strips. I'm going to come back in here, and we know that I've moved it a little bit, When you can see why I don't want to move it. I'm going to repeat the process here at the top. On my fold, I'm going to line it up with a mark on the rule, ruler. It doesn't matter which one I could use, but I'm going to mark the top and the side because now I should have a straight line here and that straight line there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how I cut it. So I'm going, turning the ruler this way now because I'm going to subcut my two and a half inch squares. And it was actually this action, this step right here, that got me hooked on stripology yeah. rulers because Golding, Virginia needed like 360 <laughs> two and a half inch squares. Okay. And I'm thinking to myself, we're going to be here forever yep. cutting. And depending on which angle you're at when you're cutting, of course, same thing is true with the zero mark doesn't matter there's a fold here and there's a fold here but now we want that that fold to be cut so to create our squares so I'm gonna bring my ruler same thing I'm using my line up here I'm looking to see now is my fold just like I did the four layers before it but now it just happens to be my fold on the other side of the zero right I gotta move it up a little bit so I can get into the slot. So here I am, okay, I'm ready. So now I'm gonna go zero, two and a half, two and a half, okay? See what we're doing here? You understand that I did two and a half, two and a half. If I need three and a half, I could do three and a half. If I need four, I could do four. If I need five, I can do five but I'm not moving my fabric, so it makes everything, and I can talk and do it because I'm just looking at the squares on here. Or, if you have the odd five and a half inch that doesn't have a cheat sheet on here, that's when those stickers can come into play to help you mark, I'm gonna cut at the five and a half, the six, whatever it is. So now, when I take these off, there's all my edges. I've got rid of all the salvage. I've gotten rid of all of the um, folds that were on there and I have all these perfectly cut two and a half inch squares very quickly amazing absolutely amazing and it just um, certainly I could have cut my strips and have not moved them yep. either um, let me get that set back yeah, down and, there and the same thing can happen as Heidi was saying so let's go backwards here just a tinch if we can um, Heidi with yours let's go back to your fabric and let's kind of do that same thing. Sure. Except for you have to move your ruler. Correct. So we don't need to zoom in on it, but you start cutting your yeah. you so if a I, couple, two and a half inches. I need my cutter. <laughs> we have our personal preferences. I'm not going to straighten the edge back up yeah. again. Just I'm going to cut my two strips. And let's just cut one. But now notice she has to move her ruler where yeah. I didn't have to move and, anything. And without, and even without trying to move the fabric, my fabric is moving. Okay, pull that away. Okay, and so just by sheer, do you see how mine moved? Because I just had to move the ruler. Just a little bit because I did, you moved the ruler. And so that alone is gonna make it more difficult. Now I'm gonna just rotate this, but again, here's the problem. In the traditional method is that I, <laughs> I don't know if I can even do it. You're challenging me here. 
You're because getting me close. Now she's having to match up her lines w with the fabric <laughs> underneath it, right? Right. I'm not, and I'm not feeling comfortable with that yet. Yeah. Okay, see, see, this is where I would go back. I would go, you know what? Can't do it that way accurately. I can do this. I can straight Take edge. One strip, and now you're doing this. And I can do that, but then I have to, again, I now have to turn. By all means, it's not that. It's not it's, that you can't. That's correct. So this is the only tool you have. Then this then is that's how you do you it. Have. Then this is how Remember, you do it. Remember, we're just trying to give you ways and to make it effective efficient for you to be successful. And I can be super accurate in knowing that my line matches, my line matches, yeah. my line matches. That part remains the same. But every time, now I have to move the ruler, line it up, and if you want to say, to me, that's where, that's where the whole difference is with the stripology right. rulers, is that I have just, I mean, in the time that it took you to cut Two strips, four layers. Oh, how many you had now? eight. Uh, uh, there are four, eight. Four, you had probably had thirty-two squares. Like in less than thirty seconds. Correct. Yeah. And I'm. I've got two, four. <laughs> four. Good job, Heidi. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I can do it. So it's again. It's not that you. You know, we talk about the fact that like you could have a car with right. rolled down windows, right. Right. Yeah. and it's going to get you in the same. It's get you, get the you same where you need to go, right. um, even if you yeah. are. Um, you know, instead of electric windows, mm -hmm. but boy, this is where some tools can really make a difference. And they do. And and let's be honest, Heidi, you were a little holdout on this stripology. Rules. I was because I've been quilting a long time. Yeah. Heck, I was I was quilting before there were rotary cutters. <laughs> Maybe and, somebody else was too. Yes, and so you know that it, there are some things we get used to the same right. things, and it doesn't mean that those are wrong or bad. Right. But there are different ways, and there are different opportunities that if it makes sense for you to learn those kinds of things, we just want to make sure you know about Absolutely. them. Absolutely. We want Absolutely. to know about them. And so uh, now, we also, you mentioned it a little bit, but um, super easy on either ruler to cut different sizes. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm gonna say a benefit is that you could have, like so often a pattern will call for two and a half inch squares and two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles it was super easy for mm -hmm. you to do the yeah. math and and switch that um, yeah. on on that particular yeah. ruler. Again, not that I couldn't do it here, yep. but a little bit more thought so has you, to when go. When your sub cut gets done, and see, like here, I missed a tiny little string right there. But you would. But have, I would have gone back with my scissors and just sliced it yes, that way. Absolutely. But what she's saying is, um, most patterns include, like we were talking earlier all of these are applicable to everything whether you're using this ruler or this ruler mm -hmm. but most of the time it will say cut your two and a half inch strip or whatever and then sub cut it into something something else so like for example I'm gonna just also use um, again we're not gonna get into a ton of this but this is where strips um, a lot of patterns call for a starting with mm -hmm. a strip mm -hmm. is that then say here's a two and a half inch triangle or a two and a half inch hexagon you literally could lay that down, lay this, um, there you go, lay the ruler over your strip, cut and cut, and you now have a triangle. Yeah. So again, even if you have a tool like this, you s often still need to start with a certain strip size mm -hmm. um, in order to get that, yeah. Yeah. Those, those specialty rulers. Yeah. And, um, the and Gundren's point trimmers, same thing, I'm gonna reach over here, um, is one of those squares. Yes, there we go. And so the, the thing about her point trimmers are understanding that sometimes you have um, you want to cut off a, the a triangle the triangle so that that it's easier to piece. And so again, these kinds of tools can be done really be used quick. once you I'll show you real quick if I had a triangle what we're meaning on. Yes. I'm just this is not, this is extra because I'm not uh, doing it, but I've cut a tip. I've Jamie, you owe me a quarter. Yeah, oh, shoot. I used yours, that's why. <laughs> Give me mine. That See, closes we get, automatically. We get, per, we get uh, uh, used to our specific yep. rules. Our what rules. Heidi is saying here is if I had two um, angles, whatever it may be, on my thing, right? And I'm just going to cut this just, off. For a moment, and I wanted to line these up when I was sewing to help make it better. That's where these come. 
that you would actually lay this it's like, down. It's like you're cutting the dog ears off yeah. before you get to the point where you cut dog ears off. And the, what a dog ear is, is when we have these guys hanging out off of our stitch. Hanging chads. The tiny little triangles, that's what right. she's referring to. Yes. So it's, it's removing that before you get yeah. to that point. So cutting two and a half inch strips, I want to talk just a minute about um, how we might organize our oh, yeah. sewing room um, and and how we might... Uh, so when you had to cut 362 and a half inch squares, what, how did you keep them organized? That's right. So that's where the Wonder Clips come in. Okay, and we got the new Jumbo ones. So I might be using one to clip all of those together because if all of a sudden I'm cutting two and a half inch and three and a half inch and four and a half yeah. inch, that I can use a clip to organize mm -hmm. that. Um, so that's one thing. Um, certainly, uh, I, you know, I actually inter interviewed Gundren years ago at this point and talked to her about her stash mm -hmm. and and how she she let, does so many beautiful scrappy quilts. Well, when she gets her fabric in, mm -hmm. and I don't remember now whether she buys a fourth of a yard or a third of a yard. It might be a third. And she just automatically cuts a certain number of two and a half inch strips, a certain number of one and a half inch strips, and she puts them in the appropriate bins. Mm -hmm. So that when she says, I'm gonna make a scrappy blue quilt, mm -hmm. she and she needs two and a half inch strips, she goes to the blue bin that has two and a half inch strips in pulls it, them and she and has them pulled out, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so certainly if that's something that you like, um, that you know you do a lot of, uh, yes, and that you, if you do a lot of patterns, that have two and a half inch, one and a half inch, three and a half, whatever that measurement is, that you have that ability to um, to pre-cut them, have them ready, right? And then there are, are tools like this. This is a fabric strip case, and it holds the two and a half inch wide jelly rolls. Like you could put an entire jelly roll in here, mm -hmm. here and open it up, or I could see it as they stack really nice that you could do blue, red, right. yellow, so organized better with and you're organized yeah. and mm -hmm. that way they don't get all messed up and tangled yeah. up and stuff and so those are a great tool um, for to help you stay organized to help stay organized yes. absolutely yes and do you like do you like to pre-cut strips I actually I, you know that's a debate I, I I don't right now yeah you you when you are ready to go do a quilt do it. you just go straight to the yep. the bin you need yep. whatever yep. you have the shelf you have <laughs> The box. Sure, your head to the bin. Yes, I yes. Uh, <laughs> wait, we, that'll be a whole nother show. Go how we, shelf. how I was gonna say, or, our, or come to Hen and Chick Studio. There you go. go and, oh wait, and buy what you need. Yeah, 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 we do that too. Yeah. So, I do think it's fascinating though, because some people that might be listening are probably maybe more experienced, and, and that they may be stripping their their stash as they're yes. going and stuff. But yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So a couple of things um, just to review. Let's yeah. review what we've been talking about. Is that is that using your stripology ruler or your traditional ruler can end up with the same results. Sometimes there are differences in the time that it takes. Right. As you saw, mm -hmm. me cutting my two and a half inch squares probably takes a little bit longer with the traditional ruler than you with the stripology right. ruler. Right, right, exactly. And so there's things like that that, you know. But again, keeping things accurate is really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So where you're putting your ruler, where you're putting your blade yeah. next to your ruler, and, and how you're doing that is, is what's important. Yeah, and making sure that you are setting yourself up for the best success for you. Yeah, absolutely. From the get-go, yes. step number one. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, man, we've, we've covered a lot of information, and we're certainly glad that you have been hanging out with us for this Tips and Tricks class. And if you ever have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to ask us, call us, call the store, send an email to info at, Heidi, uh, excuse me, info at Hen and Chick Studio, uh, dot com. There's lots of ways to reach us, um, and we'll make sure we get all of that information. Right. So until the next time we get together, be creative. <laughs>
oiled up and ready to go. Have you been practicing some, you know, loosening up some calisthenics to get ready? Oh, of course. I yeah. do yoga. So if you don't know what the chicken run is, Heidi, I don't know if your yoga is going to help you with the chicken run. Oh, I think it's in the center. Okay. Yeah. You, you go center yourself. The chicken run is a very, very fun, fun activity that involves sewing together two and a half inch strips to create a completed, we'll call it completed, small quilt, throw quilt, um, in a fast amount of time. Now the fun about it is being with other chicks. That's right. To do it. And other chicks. And maybe a little bit of competitive adrenaline. Absolutely. And, and this is both in person and virtual. So we love how technology allows anybody anywhere to participate in our first ever chicken run. Hi, I'm Heidi Kaizen, owner of Hen and Chick Studio in Conrad, Iowa. We'd love to have you come and visit. Of course, we're in central Iowa, but of course, blip, 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 blip. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Heidi. We are so excited to have all of you with us tonight as we prepare. Mm -mm, start over. Wait, just keep going. Yeah, I don't. Okay. 